So, it is more difficult sometimes for self-employed uh, customers to get a mortgage. Um, but the products that you end up getting are exactly the same as you would get if you're an employed applicant. It's just sometimes difficult to get one. Um, and the reason is that uh, the bank's got so much data about their different types of borrower now um, that whilst you might be able to provide lots of logic as to why your business is great and sustainable and profitable going forward, the data suggests that as a percentage, uh, more customers with um, self-employed income fall into arrears than employed. Um, and that's just how it is. Um, and also, uh, lenders are assessing your income based on what's happened in the past, whereas with an employed applicant, they've got live data, so they've got an up-to-date pay slip. Uh, and that's why it can be sometimes more difficult. But if we can get you the mortgage, you'll get the same rate as everybody else. Different lenders assess self-employed applicants' income in different ways. So the kind of standard way that most of them do it is look at your dividends and salary for the last couple of years, last two years, and average it. But not everyone, uh, not every single lender assesses in that way. For example, there are some lenders that will ignore what's happened in previous years in favour of the latest year. So that's really good if your business has, has sort of started to perform really well in the latest year. They could ignore what happened in year one, for example, in favour of year two, as long as it looks like it's sustainable. And maybe a word from your accountant to suggest uh, why that, that income is going to be the same or more going forward. In addition to that, um, the odd lender will ignore your salary and dividends, if you've got, if you've got only a limited company that is, and go off your net profit. Um, this is really good for business owners whose businesses are really successful, but they don't need to draw that dividend down as their personal income, so they've got lots of savings or something, and they can leave that money uh, invested in the business. Sometimes those type of applicants can be disadvantaged um, because they're not drawing every single penny out of their business. It doesn't seem fair, and there are lenders that account for that by assessing income based on your net profit. Most lenders will need to be self-employed for two years, and that is also two years worth of accounts submitted to the revenue as well. Um, that's just because they don't want to think that your business is a, a flash in the pan, you've had one brilliant year, and it could crash and burn the next year. So they want to see that build up and that sustainability over that two year period. However, uh, we do have access to one or two high street lenders and several specialist lenders um, that will consider uh, applications from self-employed applicants with only one year's worth of accounts. If you're a director of your own limited company, then you'll tend to be um, assessed as a self-employed applicant, even though you're employed by your own company. Um, the, whether you'll get determined as self-employed or employed depends on your shareholding, your percentage shareholding. So typically, most lenders will assess you as self-employed if your shareholding is 20% or 25% or more. Um, however, um, there are some lenders that don't trigger that until 30%. Um, so it just depends on how your income um, is made up. But if you've got a high basic salary, it could work better for you that way to be treated as an employed applicant. Over 30%, almost all of them are going to treat you as a self-employed applicant. When it comes to contractor mortgages, it's an interesting one because you could be potentially assessed as employed or self-employed. It's one of the few um, occasions where uh, an applicant's income can be painted black or white. So if you've been doing it a long time, um, then it could be that both methods can apply to you and whichever gave you the highest outcome would be the one that the lender assesses you on. So as you can tell by all these varying policies, lending criteria, ways that your income is assessed by lenders, very, very complicated for a self-employed applicant to be able to get the maximum amount of borrowing and the best deal that's available. So for me, in, in these situations, it's worth paying the money, getting a good broker on your side that can assess your case, package it up and find the right lender first time for you. Thanks for watching the video. Um, we do rely on user generated content so please subscribe if you found the information useful and send me a question in the comments below or drop me an email and I'll do my best to answer it.